Welcome back, everyone. We'll go ahead. So till now, we were discussing about delays um, and uh, the reason why we need to persevere. So there are many reasons. We said when we pray, then we can wait till God's timing. Second is we can um, overcome any demonic activity which is against our prayer. And finally, obedience, right? Till we are obedient, we have to keep praying because till that time, uh, God's promise will not be fulfilled. And in the meantime, prayer, Jesus told us that we must pray. And so we keep praying and we are persistent. Uh, so any, any questions thus far or we'll go ahead? Things are quite clear, right? Uh, and as far as delays are concerned, you know, that last part, obedience, uh, that's why we have to keep checking our hearts. Sometimes because of the wrong heart attitude also, God is not able to do. You know, we are not able to see progress because we may be carrying a lot of pride or jealousy, bitterness, and we are saying, God, you know, increase me. And God says, no, I can't. If with this attitude I increase you, how, how are you going to manage? So obedience uh, in our own lives and right heart attitudes. Now coming to a very classic example of somebody who prayed with persistence. Two parables we saw. There was a friend and a widow. They both prayed or they asked. Now the next really good example is Elijah, Elijah the prophet. Okay, so in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, God speaks and tells Elijah what is going to happen. Can someone quickly read through this? 1 Kings, please read into the mic so that the online students can also hear. 1 Kings 17, verses 1 and 2. And the Elijah, the, the Tishabite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew, nor rain these years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying. Okay. So God is promising Elijah, that there will be no dew nor rain okay, in those years, except by the word that Elijah says. Why? What is, what is the role of Elijah or what is the calling of Elijah? Prophet, hear from God and speak what God is saying. So when God says, there's going to be rain. Okay, we've all understood that. Now let's move on. Uh, First Kings chapter 18. Verses 1 and 2. One person could read. This and it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah hmm. in the third year saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab hmm. and there was a serve famine in Samaria. Okay, great. So, Elijah said, there will be no rain un without my word. Okay, after three years, God's word comes. And God says, you have to present yourself to Ahab, who is Ahab, the king at that time. And I will send rain on the earth. So, God is promising, Elijah, now is the time. It's going to rain. Once you say it, it will happen. So Elijah boldly, he goes, he presents himself to Ahab. And yet the scripture says there was a severe famine in Samaria. He tells Ahab, but still there is no rain. Now let's quickly read verse 39 to 46. So maybe another person could read, read it out. Few verses. Same chapter. 
and when all people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Eliza uh, said unto them, One minute. Are you reading First Kings 18? Okay. And Eliza said unto them, Take the prophets to Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Eliza brought them down to the Bo Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to top of the Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Mm -hmm. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, uh, there is sent a little cloud out of the sea, like a man had. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare the chariot and get thee down. The rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with the clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain, and the Ahab rode and went to the uh, Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on um, Ahazgil, Eliza, and he grinded up his uh, loans and ran uh, before the Ahab to ent entrance of Zeril. Okay, all right. Thank you. So, uh, three years later, God gives the promise that it's going to rain. But still there is a famine. And we see uh, regarding Mount Carmel. So there is this whole challenge, right, between uh, uh, Elijah and the and the uh, priests of of um, Asherah and yeah Baal. So they worship, and uh, he calls down he calls down fire. So there's a great victory that happens. Following that, he goes back up to the top of Carmel and. Just think about this. He's already told Ahab it's going to rain and it's still not rained. So prophetic word. God said it's going to rain. So it should rain. It's still not rain. There's still famine in the land. So what does Elijah do? Elijah, he goes and he prays. Okay? So that's what the scriptures tell us. It's still not rain. So perseverance or persistence that we are talking about. He was a man of prayer. He understood. He had revelation about the power of prayer, even in the fulfillment of the prophetic word. It is God's plan. Is it God's plan? Yes, it is. So clear. God told him. He even went and announced it to Ahab. How can it change now? It has to rain. But when the prophetic word is declared so clearly, what is the prophet doing? Even the prophet is praying. Okay, so this is something that we may miss. Many of us, God said, I got a prophetic word. God has made it very clear this is going to happen. But we don't pray. The prophet is praying after he received the prophetic word. So there is an element of prayer and persisting in prayer even regarding the prophetic word. So Elijah is praying. Let's see how he prays. So it says, you know, he puts his face between his knees and that's nothing but, you know, a position of prayer. So he takes that position. He's praying. But while he's praying, he's also looking for results. So he tells his servant, he says, okay, go and look toward the sea. Keep looking because as I'm praying, God will manifest the promise. So faith, full of faith. When I'm praying, it's going to happen. That's the way he believed. He's not praying, uh, you know, uh, faithlessly. I'm praying, we'll see if God does it or not. That's not the attitude. He knows there has to be something that takes place through prayer. So he sent his uh, servant and the servant comes back. He says, there is nothing. Look at this, verse 43. It says, and seven times he said, go again. Wow, what patience Elijah had. So he prayed, no results. Second time he's praying. And notice it doesn't tell us how long he's praying. Was he praying for 
two minutes? Was he praying for two hours? Was he praying for two days? We don't know how long he prayed. But seven times he prayed, whatever durations he picked. And each time there was faith in his heart. And he told the servant, go look. And the servant probably kept coming back and saying, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing. So what does this teach us? How much are we willing to trust God and pray in faith? You know, even the prophet, seven times he's ready to pray till he sees the results. So what happens is we give up. Once we pray, we say, oh, God is not doing, forget it. I'll do something else. We pray twice. And, you know, that, that itself is great. We're praying twice. Then we give up. We say, no, nothing is happening. Leave it. Third time, fourth time. We are tired. By the fourth time, it's like, oh, over. I'm not going to pray anymore. And then we ask God, why didn't you do it for me? But look at Elijah. Seven times. He's praying and praying. Why did he stop seven times? Because there was some result. Now, I don't know if he would have prayed more until he saw the cloud. But by the seventh time, verse 44, and then it came to pass the seventh time. Because there is a result. That's why he stopped at seven. It came to pass there is a uh, that he said there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So the servant is saying, Elijah, there are signs. Not even, the promise is not yet here. There are signs of the promise coming through. And it's beautiful. The faith of Elijah, you know, uh, it, it, the scripture says that... Um, Yes, that. Okay, so I don't know if it's in another passage, but the sound of rain. Yeah, I'm missing that someplace. But anyway, uh, so he realizes that it is going to rain now. This is the fulfillment of the promise that has come his way. So what does he do? He gets ready and he actually leaves the place. That is also faith, isn't it? Because it's going to pour now. It's going to pour and the promise will be fulfilled. So what is it that we want to learn from this? Even the prophet, uh, the apostle James, he writes about this in James chapter 5. Verses 16 to 20, where he says, verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So even James is saying that God worked with a man, co-labor, right? We keep saying, right, we need to co-labor with God. So what is that co-laboring? Prayer. It's when a man prayed that first it did not rain and second it rained. So we need to have that kind of patience to pray through the promises of God. And if we don't pray, what do we think? Will it happen or not happen? God already promised, but will it happen or not? The fact is, it may not happen. Is it God's will? Yes. But it may not even happen. Okay? So that is the kind of responsibility that God has given us. So we need to pray. We cannot have any substitute for prayer. Elijah fervently prayed. So the scripture, verse 16, can someone read James chapter 5 and verse 16? Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of righteous, righteous man avails much. Eliza was a man with a nature like us and he prayed earnestly that he, uh, it would 
it would not rain and it didn't it did not rain on the land of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit brethren uh, if in if anyone among you wanders from the truth and some one turns him back let him know that he he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins okay great thank you so there in verse 16 the last part the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much okay this simply means that the earnest prayer and who is righteous man those who are born again because we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus positionally but of course we need to be walking in righteousness also so both the things apply but the prayers of a righteous man avails much that means god will answer there are results when we pray god will answer the way god answered elijah the next verse uh, james says elijah was a man just like us he was a prophet yes but at the same time he was a human being and god allowed a human being to co-labor with him so in the same way you and i are human beings if god could hear the prayer of a human being like elijah and first there was no rain then there was rain when we pray why is it that god can't do things of course just like elijah we can also pray and god can do many wonderful things and that's why james is saying that we need to pray okay and he brings in two contexts towards the end james where he says verse 19 brethren if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back okay so that is one context of people going away from god wanders from the truth means going away from god now verse 20 says let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins so uh, you know there can be there can be the bringing back of anyone who goes away from god and this kind of result like you know you want to see somebody turning back to god do you think it takes time you're praying for a loved one who's away from god yes it takes time it may take a long time also so do you see how that is inserted here where james is telling us that if somebody goes away from god persevere in prayer the prayers the fervent the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much so for those who are away from god we need to be praying for them and there is one more one more context here which has to do with sickness and i'll read it out for us yeah this is from verse 14 it says is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven and then verse 16 continues confess your trespasses to one another so even when it comes to praying for healing it may take time in some situations right first it, what did we see earlier if somebody has gone away from god it may take persistence in prayer to win them back second context sickness it may take some time for people to experience um, you know the manifestation of healing so in both these situations what is james saying the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much meaning keep praying 
don't stop. Because Elijah prayed like that. He prayed seven times. Okay, so this is the lesson for us about persevering in prayer. That there are situations, there are circumstances where we need to wait on the Lord and uh, keep praying till we see the results. Uh, has anyone heard the acronym PUSH? P-U-S-H. Okay, so it simply means uh, pray until something happens. So push in prayer simply means pray until something happens. But make sure that it is the will of God. Make sure that it is the word of God that we are trying to pray. Because if you try to push for something which is not God's will, you know, we will not receive anything. Yes. Uh, like you already told us that yeah. from the word of God, you can know that it is a will of God to pray like that. But if some person is keep on praying and praying and praying for the wrong thing, how can we confront that person? That, okay, it is not the will of God. You are praying wrong. Um, so how we can do that? See, we can try telling them. We can try to explain to them. But if they don't listen, we can't do much. We can't force. Uh, see, the main challenge is a person's will. If they are not willing, you can't stop them. And ma'am, uh, what is that? What is it not that the thing is not in the will of God? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if I pray for the car, I want a car. Or if I pray, I want this. Or if mm -hmm. I pray that I want to, like. Okay, something which is not in the will of God. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, like, how will I know that, okay, and I'm praying for very long time for this thing. So like, am I wasting my time or it is like, like other way? See, if, uh, if there is a prayer, which you're saying is not in the will of God. I want a car. Suppose I want a car. And I want it uh, like very much. I really need it mm. for my family and I. But I think that can God can provide it. Like like if it's it is the right time or not. I know God will provide it, but I am thinking that it is the right time or not. I was I am keep on praying, but it's not happening. Then my mind is thinking like, is it the right time or not? Should I keep on praying? Should I keep on asking? Maybe God will provide it the right time. So should I keep myself consistent on that prayer? Or should I stop or should I wait for the God's time? See, if it is something which is um, in the will of God, if it is a good thing, but you're just not, or let's say you're not clear if it is God's will or not. Right? So are you clear on or whether this... Ah, then if you're clear, then all these things apply. Maybe it's just not God's time. But if you're not sure if it is the will of God, then, um, you know, we may have to check whether it is something that will glorify God or not. Right? So let's imagine it will glorify God. For example, I'm just giving an example. Okay. Uh, let's imagine that um, I want to do another degree. Okay, so I just feel like, yeah, I should do another degree. It'll help me. And maybe I want to do a theological ministry kind of degree because it will give me a lot of knowledge. It's not a bad thing. Okay, but I'm not clear whether this is God's will or not. So what can we do? We can pray. We can place it before the Lord and we can say, God, this is my desire. It's not wrong what I'm asking, but I don't know whether you want it for me or not. And keep praying for it. Now, if it is truly in the will of God, God will give the confirmation. Okay, so we will know. In some time, God will make it clear and say, yeah, actually, maybe this desire is from me. So it will come through. 
but if it is not from the lord he will make that also clear maybe the circumstances will never work out i will never get an opening and i will actually end up never doing it so if there are certain desires no harm just praying for it if it's there's nothing wrong with it right if you need a vehicle to transport your family there's nothing wrong but put it before the lord and be willing to wait for the confirmation that's it there's no okay. it's uh, nothing so, wrong so another question i have one more mm. that like you said keep praying don't stop mm. right but i am keep on praying for the wrong thing ha huh. and i don't know that thing but i really want that thing i mm. don't know that it is wrong but i really want that thing and i am keep on praying huh. but it's not happening so it's not happening so does that mean i have to sacrifice that thing also yeah so if god is not answering it uh, we have to take the hint that uh, it, it's probably not meant for us and we can just stop asking god so in case where we are not clear we pray the prayer of consecration that jesus prayed not my will but yours be done so we have to pray that prayer and submit it to god okay but i'm like very much like have stuck in this point like how would how i will know if i am praying how i will know how i will get the answer <laughs> because sometimes it is it's very difficult to find the answer it is correct or not correct so we just need to uh, again coming back to patience faith and patience god will make it clear god will make it clear that it's not meant right so if it's not coming through and it's not his will he will speak to us and show us that that's not for us so it will happen Now he won't let us keep, uh, you know, moving in that track. Surely he will guide us. No, so he'll speak to us, and then we are the ones who have to stop praying for it. Okay, that's it, everyone. No other questions. Uh, pastor uh, mm. like uh, we were talking about the complete obedience mm. and uh, comparison is the thief of joy uh, when we see some people who are working or who are not working in that area mm. but they get something like mm. they praying or they are uh, they are thriving in the ministry or they are thriving in whatever but they need to work in some of the areas which which is very essential uh, which is crucial yeah and uh, at the same time um, our life also god is telling to work on the similar areas which are crucial for the ministry um, they are thriving but you are not thriving because god is telling you you have to work on these areas but you are like even they need to work on that i know that person even they need to work on that like but for, they are like thriving or doing well or in business or ministry or something it just it just came to came to me like uh, uh like how, how does that happen like um maybe like i'm not saying in an unbelief uh, thing it's just, it just came to me like maybe god is looking at uh, the other areas that he needs to work and god is talking to him and maybe i i don't know like yeah sure so uh yeah it's true that we could look at somebody whom god is blessing and we can see weaknesses uh similar to ours also and then you know god is asking us to work on it and then we wonder why isn't god asking them to work on it what i would say is that um yeah don't don't even get into that place of comparison okay or i would tell myself like you don't play god because we don't know the details we don't have to do god's work of evaluating uh 
you know whether that person needs to be blessed or not blessed how much are they working on their weakness or not so the way we can think or what helps generally is when we look at somebody and who's supposed to be thriving and yet is displaying weaknesses when we look at those weaknesses we can be mindful and say hey i never want to do that that's it just take lessons from it and leave it at that that person's journey with the lord is their journey and uh, it's between god and them if they don't correct themselves or they don't mature it's up to god what he wants to do we should be more focused on our lives so when god is asking me to work on my weaknesses i'll focus on that that's it right and we can take lessons from people around and if there's things that we like we can say oh god i love what you know this person is like and their their attitude and their passion and i pray that i could have that but when we see weaknesses we can say that is something i don't like i dislike so i'm just not going to take that so i make a decision i determine to myself that i don't want to be making that mistake that's all i can do i can't change the other person or judge god on why he is blessing them or not blessing them so it's it's all um, the way you uh, perceive it and the lessons that you gain from it i don't know if it's that that's correct answer but uh, that's how i look at it yeah 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 yes yes ha uh, okay sure 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 yeah so yeah maybe a perspective like that can help us and we focus on our own lives don't worry god will deal with the other person yes ha pray ma'am uh, i don't understand why jacob prayed with the first gen i mean what the reason like he have a blessings everything but even he have the blessings he prayed for the blessings mm -hmm. and sometime in the bible we can see the angels can deliver your prayers to god and in here god came here to uh, telling to the jacob leave me jacob i want to go situation Mm -hmm. can you please explain the yeah i uh, will try okay so you're talking about genesis uh, 32 genesis 32 no okay so um we know that jacob wrestled with god and uh, he cried out to god he said i will not leave you till you bless me okay why did he do that why did he do that he was already very blessed uh, he had you know sheep and cattle and everything he was so rich but when we go back to uh the book of hosea so hosea chapter 12 verses 3 to 5 can someone quickly read that out please hosea 12 3 to 5 I thought Ephraim to walk talking them by their arms but they did not know that I healed them I drew uh, is it Hosea 12 12 sorry 12 3 to 5 he took his brother by the heel in the womb and his strength he struggled with God as he struggled with the angel and prevailed he wept and sought forever a uh, favor from him he found him in bethel and they he spoke to us okay so you see god did not forget god did not forget the wrestling of jacob so that means that it was something special when jacob told 
God that I will not leave you till you bless me. So what is the result of Jacob's wrestling with God? Let's quickly turn to Obadiah verses, or chapter 1, verse 17. But on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their positions. Okay, very nice. So as we read this, this um, blessing, okay, prophet, uh, you know, the prophet says that there will be deliverance, there shall be holiness. And God is saying, the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So we're just trying to assess why did Jacob do this and what was the effect that it had on God. So based on what Hosea said and based on what Obadiah is saying, we know that God never forgot it. And here God could have said, see, the house of Jacob is the house of uh, Abraham, isn't it? Uh, so we can trace back the house of Isaac. But why is God saying the house of Jacob will possess its possessions? Because God is remembering Jacob and what Jacob did. It was very special to him. So it's not about blessing Prem. It's about the hunger for God that Jacob had in his life. Or you can say the deep devotion of Jacob. It was not for any material thing, but he was, he, he wanted a strong grip on God. Nobody else did that. People would have asked him, you know, God, make me big, make me large, all kinds of prayers. But look at Jacob. He wanted a relationship with God and I'm not able to explain it with words, but y'all are getting it right. Like it's one intense passion that he has for God. And he sought the blessing of God. Actually, there was no need for him to, to beg God like that. But he did. And God, God loved it. That he, rem he remembered it. You know, as far as uh, Hosea is concerned, as far as Obadiah is concerned. And he actually blessed Jacob and said, Look, Jacob, you will possess all the possessions. Everything I'm going to give to you. Because you desired me like that. So that's the whole point. It's his attitude and it's his passion, which God loved and God never forgot. And that's what we can learn from. So it was not like he was asking for more things. Okay, Prem. So this is deeper than that. We'll come to it. Uh, when we talk about an intense level of prayer, we'll talk about these things, about Jacob's wrestle and, and all that. Yeah? Ma'am. Uh... Yeah. Uh, having uh, having of the uh, sequence, mm. Jacob when Jacob prayed for physical uh, physical things, physical blessing, he got everything fast. But why about spiritual? Why God take late about spiritual? I I don't think that he didn't get it, but he just desired more. God had already given him spiritual blessings, and God blessed him spiritually also. But it was his. Uh, you know, sometimes it's like we're asking for more of God. We already have a lot. Okay, We are filled with the spirit. We have revelation of scripture. We have the presence, everything. But I, I like it. Uh, one preacher said like this. When God satisfies your hunger, you become more hungry. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. So the more you consume. See, in the natural world, once we eat, we are satisfied. We say, okay, enough. Stop. Don't put any more food on my plate. But in the spiritual world, the more you eat, the more hungry you are. So it shows the spiritual condition of Jacob where he had experienced God so much that it was not enough for him. He's saying, God, more. I want more. And God liked that attitude. So that's how it is. It's not that he was not spiritually blessed, uh, but he hungered for more. That's how we look at it. Okay, so we'll move on from Jacob. All right, uh, there's one last portion here which we'll quickly uh, consider before we close today. And that is about Daniel 
pressing past demonic opposition when we read daniel chapter 9 verses 1 to 24 we see there that daniel was reading the prophecies about his people god had um spoken and said that for 70 years uh, the people of god will be under the babylonian rule but after 70 years will come the deliverance so when daniel was reading all these prophecies he came to know that the time was almost up so based on the prophecies he starts to pray you know that's when the uh, demonic opposition happens and then he prays and the answer comes okay so one is that he prays just like elijah see these are all prophetic men god is speaking to them and giving them revelation think about daniel daniel gave prophecies the things that we are seeing today between the nations what's happening the end times but even daniel is praying already the prophecy says after 70 years leave babylon and daniel starts to pray that god will fulfill the prophetic word so what does it tell us today there are many things given in scripture for us you know we say oh god will send a revival god uh, you know many will turn to the lord many things we speak about because it is written in the bible but who is going to pray it's written but god says you and i have to pray elijah prayed about the prophetic word daniel is praying about the prophetic word it's mentioned in the book of jeremiah ezra speaks about it right but there is a man who prayed 21 days he prayed he said lord your word says let it happen so it's basically an encouragement for you and me there are many things that god has already revealed but he wants men and women to pray there is something in the kingdom of god where even after we know that it is god's will things will not start to move till we pray that is how important prayer is and we cannot compromise that okay so we need to pray we are saying revival so revival also is in that category of persistence of prayer where there are people they are praying for you know uh 5 years 10 years 20 years an entire lifetime why revival is not coming let's not worry about that but we pray till we see something happen that's our job that's our duty we have to co labor with god and persevere there are many prayers which we have to keep praying till we see those things take place okay so uh again remember the words of jesus luke 18 verse 1 men should always pray and not lose heart so don't be discouraged keep praying so with that i think we can end today's class unless there's anything uh, that you all want to discuss uh online students any comments please feel free to unmute and uh, speak uh yes uh, brother mark Can we not able to hear you if you can unmute and speak please Okay let let me yeah Yeah I'll, thank God the lesson is good Okay please yeah, God Yeah the lesson is good Yeah please God, please God do, you, do you have a question also No 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 Okay okay just a comment That's yeah. fine thank you thank you so much All right let's close in prayer then and uh, I want to request uh, somebody from the online batch to close in prayer Father in Jesus name our Lord we thank you we glorify you we magnify you we thank you for today's teaching Father please accept us now in the name of Jesus Father give us more knowledge wisdom and understanding to stay in prayer 
Brother Elkana, sorry to interrupt. We are unable to hear you. Okay, I think there's some technical uh, issue there. We're not able to hear Elkana. Could uh, someone else please pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this online class and the opportunity to gather together in your presence. We ask for your blessing on each person that you would guide your our minds and hearts as we learn. Help us to seek your truth, to grow in knowledge and wisdom, and to put into practice the things we learn. Thank you for your grace and mercy and for your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And uh, hope all the best for your assignment. You still have time, right, to complete it. So do well.